Namaste. Welcome back to Real Time Digital Signal Processing Lab. So, whatever we have studied in theory regarding the adaptive filter, we will be uh, seeing the demo first in MATLAB. In the next class, we will be seeing uh, uh, on the board using the Code Composer Studio. So, today we will uh, uh, present the MATLAB. So, we will uh, uh, see the autocorrelation uh, function with an example using MATLAB. So, what is it? Number of uh, uh, samples is chosen as 1024 and f 1 is the frequency of sine wave what we will consider and f 2 is uh, 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 other uh, frequency component which is 200 hertz, f 1 is 1 hertz which is the sampling frequency both of them. And then we will first we have to generate the sine wave uh, using the sine function in this case what we are using it. So, as we have discussed in the sine generation you can use any of the method either you can use the table, you can use uh, IR filter as an oscillatory function or you can use the sine function basically. In this case we have taken sine function and then we can do the subplot and then see how it is going to look like. Then what we uh, this is the frequency what it is generated with sampling frequency of uh, this thing what is it 8 kilohertz. So, 1 depicts that uh, as the 1000 hertz and 200 will be 2 kilohertz what it is going to be generated. So, then you will be calling the autocorrelation function in MATLAB R x x which is not nothing but x correlation of x basically and then we will uh, plot it and then we can uh, uh, r x s is getting plot and then we will see how it uh, is going to look like. So, this is the function in MATLAB what we will be running it. So, we will check the thing. So, it will be asking me from which folder it has to take it default it may be there. Since I have opened it or you have to go to that particular directory and open the file. So, all the files are here as you can see. So, it is running. Now, as you will be seeing the thing, this is the sine wave uh, uh, which is correlated with the other sine wave. So, you will be seeing the peak in the center and then which is going to be dying down in this case. So, Uh, this is how it works and uh, we will see that if we change the add a noise to it. So, we have generated that that is between the correlation between the two sine waves. Now, if the sine wave is buried in a random noise what we will be generating it. So, that is x plus the noise added and see whether we can see in that particular noise the correlation between the uh, whatever input what we want to get that. So, again we will be uh, checking why is our uh, uh, noisy signal along with the original signal which has got embedded and then with the original signal we are trying to correlate and what will be our we call this as the cross correlation. So, in this case because we are taking the correlation between two uh, uh, different signals. So, if it is with the same signal uh, we know that it is autocorrelation here it is between two signals. So, we call it as the cross correlation basically and we will see how the output is going to look like. So, this is the sine wave which is buried a uh, noise signal what you are seeing the thing. So, this is y of n. So, you are unable to make out the thing. When I take the cross correlation, so you will be seeing that your signal is present that is what the cross correlation is going to show in this case. So, now what is the uh, next one? We will see cross correlation. So, this is between a sine wave and then cosine wave uh, first example what we will be seeing it. So, you will be seeing that uh, uh, these are the T and T 2 are the uh, two frequencies 
what we will be taking it, wave periods what you will be multiplying with and then sample period what you will take it. Here uh, uh, over sample is 1024 in this case and frequency is 1 kilohertz and then you will be uh, this is the sample period uh, with the uh, two in by over sample what you will be taking it. So, you will be doing the generation of sine wave here and cosine wave and then you can see the correlation between sine wave, cos wave and then the sine wave and then see how it is going to look like. So, we will uh, run the code and you will be seeing that this is what our uh, code looks like. What we will do is uh, okay. one thing what I have to do is for you to look at the thing correctly. So, I will try to reduce the display settings so that you can view the uh, thing correctly. So, I will make it 100 percent and then only for the uh, letters we may have to have it a little bigger. So, I can make it this is little bigger for you to view the signal. So, you will be seeing that uh, these are the two signals. So, when you do the subtraction of it there will be something correlation uh, coefficient is going to be more in this case. So, that is what, what we will uh, look at it and then uh, we will see for the I uh, will be passing sine wave and then I will be passing the other one is a exponent. So, how does it look like we will see it. So, I will be commenting the cos wave and then uh, I am calling the with the same name because I need not have to change at uh, uh, this place also, but this is now the exponential uh, decaying signal. So, minus 0.1 into t whatever uh, uh, t is getting generated here in the same way. Okay. Then we can see it in t 2 also what is the thing is going to look like. So, we will run this again. So, you are seeing that this is what you are uh, uh, that is uh, cross correlation between your uh, exponentially decaying signal and then the sine wave. When you add them out you will be seeing that it becomes 0. So, that that shows that they are not correlated. So, as we discussed in the theory if it is plus 1 it is uh, positively correlated, if it is negative negatively correlated or if it is 0 it is uncorrelated. So, this is what, what it will show. So, we will see that uh, with respect instead of t we will put it as uh, t 2 and see whether it is going to make any difference here. T 2 was the uh, sample period which was getting generated with respect to our uh, cause wave si uh, signal. So, we will run the thing. So, you will be seeing that it is uh, how the distance is when you add both of them you will be seeing that it is going to become 0 irrespective of whatever changes you have done. So, this shows that how our correlation is going to look like some other uh, uh, functions are there. So, you will be seeing that how to generate uh, uh, if you see the thing uh, this is generating 64 samples of uh, this thing sine wave with frequency 1 kilohertz. So, how you can run that and then the other one will be how to generate your exponential signal. So, you will be seeing that this is what how the exponential looks like which we uh, this thing run the cross correlation with this exponent and then the sine wave generated. And then uh, the other one uh, you will be seeing it is uh, um, generating uh, what is it 64 with uh, this thing. Uh, unit impulse signal how to generate it what it is going to sh show some of the signal generation what you will be looking at it. So, this is the unit uh, response. So, at 0 it is going to be 1 and rest of the places it is going to be zeros as you know how to generate it using MATLAB these functions show. Now, uh, with this uh, correlation 
So, what we will do is we will go to adaptive filter. So, uh, we have uh, already seen this adaptive filter in the last class. So, what we will do is how to generate our LMS and then uh, NLMS algorithm uh, and then see the difference uh, application what we discussed in the class will uh, look at it noise cancellation and other things and then how to generate our uh, echo uh, and then scrambler and equalizer uh, with respect to uh, MATLAB what we will see it and then the same thing we can look at it in the uh, code composer studio also. And uh, we will be seeing uh, these are the assignments done by as I have been mentioning by different students. So, how they do that and then how your code also can be what we will look at it. Okay. So, this will be a M file what it is going to run it. I will be closing because we have finished the thing. So, we can uh, open this. So, here it is uh, doing a GUI. So, LMS algorithm demo what we have seen the thing. So, we will see NLMS and then RLS uh, those who are interested can look into the thing and then see that how it is going to work, want to work because uh, it is a very complex uh, 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 equations one has to write and then it will take time for uh, most of the applications either we will be running a LMS algorithm which has faster because we know that uh, time consumption for uh, inversion of a matrix and other things will take longer time in our hardware. So, we will be trying to avoid. Okay. So, you will be seeing that uh, this is what the um, how the creation of our LMS algorithm. So, the order is defined with a 20 if you want to change the order you can do the thing and then the weight functions are initially set to 0 and then mu is set to 0 0.006. So, we have seen that varying the mu how it is going to get affected. Okay. So, you will be seeing that up to the length of x minus order. So, you will be putting it to the buffer. So, our y out of i is going to be Okay, what I will do is now before running the thing I can increase the font size so that you would be able to see them properly. I okay. will make it as 125 and then when I am running the thing uh, if the graphs are coming then we may have to uh, reduce the thing. So, now you will be seeing length of x minus the order of your filter you will be putting that uh, uh, what is it buffer is initialized and then y out of i is buffer of into your y into your uh, this thing uh, weight function w into 2 and then error function is calculated of y i minus buffer into w and this is the weight function which is getting updated w plus buffer uh, dot star mu into our error of i. So, update the weights and then we will be computing it. So, so the next one is LMS, NLMS algorithm. So, here we will be defining alpha. Alpha is equal to 1 we said it is equivalent to LMS algorithm. So, here alpha is chosen as 0 0.005 and then your constant what you will be calling it as 0 0.7. So, you will be uh, doing the same thing with your mu is calculated on the go as you can see it here. It is 2 times alpha divided by because we said some small constant what we have to assume. So, that divide by 0 is not going to happen and then you will be doing the buffer squared in this case okay. and then your weight function is going to be updated. So, as you can see that this division also has to happen. Uh, which is a costly affair as we have uh, seen in the architecture uh, class. 
So, multiplication is easier to do it we saw Brown multiplier, but division successive uh, uh, subtraction what we have to do it which is costly. So, that, that is the reason why most of the cases we will be assuming mu and then we will be running the LMS algorithm. In the worst case if it is not ok then we may have to go for this. So, the other one is uh, RLS algorithm you will be seeing that your uh, uh, this thing uh, will be calling it as a random function and then you have to length of the w is going to be zeros and then some constant what you will be providing in this case gamma is one of the constant one has to use it which is almost e uh, nearer to one what it is shown in the thing. And then uh, uh, the equation you will be seeing that how you will be calculating your temporary value and then error function what you are calculating and then alpha is going to be calculated in this case using gamma plus r buffer basically and then g is the constant p into buffer divided by alpha what we will take and then the weight is updated based on these uh, constants basically g value and then you will be calculating the uh, that is a p value power of the thing uh, by gamma and then your y out is n is going to be your y temporary what you have calculated here earlier ok. And this is how you will be updating your uh, this thing uh, what is it uh, uh, con uh, mu value which is going to be calculated and then as you will be seeing that lot of division and then multiplication are involved in the RLS algorithm. So, we will see, but it is much more precise than the both of the algorithm. So, we will run the algorithm uh, as you will be ok. I was able to see the thing otherwise I had to reduce my size of the um, what I will put it as uh, screen to in any case to have a better clarity what we will do is uh, put it in the 100 percent our display size. So, that you will be able to see them clearly. So, as you can see here I will make it maximize. So, I will be loading the uh, noisy signal. So, I have to select the thing this is the noisy signal what I have it and then I have to load the reference signal both has to be fed into our algorithm. So, this is the desired signal. So, now we have run it already in the previous class LMS algorithm, but to have the better uh, understanding of it I will run the LMS algorithm. And you are seeing that this is the noise added uh, signal what it is shown this is the original signal when you do the LMS algorithm you are getting back. So, we will play the thing it is the same speed signal what we will be doing it. Remember the force will be with you always. So, you will be seeing with the noise. Remember the force will be with you always. Here also single tone as we demonstrated in the filters same thing has been used for our adaptive algorithm. So, you will be hearing the output. Remember the force will be with you always. So, you can see initially there was a dip. So, we will run the same thing with NLMS algorithm ok. So, you have seen that the thing is little bit sh shifted and we will hear it how it is different from the LMS algorithm. Remember the force will be with you always. So, now we will run the RLS al algorithm which is much more precise as you will be seeing that this is your input signal and this is with the noise and you are seeing your output almost your complete noise is removed. So, we will play this. Remember the force will be with you always. So, one has to pay for computation if you want to have much more clarity ok. So, we will get back to our uh, 125 percent so that we can see the thing and then when we are uh, running the code we will go back again to our 100 percent. So, this shows our NLMS and uh, this thing algorithm. 
So, what we will do is again uh, as I said uh, different students do different way here everything put together. So, the other students what they do is some of them they do it in a uh, different way it is directly LMS algorithm here it is going to run. Okay. So, that is uh, what is it you will be uh, algorithm remains the same thing your order of the filter may vary and what tone you will be taking it is going to be different. So, this is going to start from 120 uh, uh, this thing uh, x and y arrays basically. So, what you are storing it. So, this will be your LMS algorithm i is equal to l uh, you will be starting from uh, l value down to 2 actually that is by minus 1. So, you will be updating your x i in the reverse direction. Okay. So, this consumes less time when you are doing the uh, from the other end to this end. Uh, basically, circular convolution should happen. So, that is what what is implemented here. So, you will be seeing that Excel uh, uh, filter uh, through the thing. So, that is up to the filter length you are calculating your y x of i into your w of i because uh, n minus uh, i what it is the thing what it is taking x of n my uh, i minus n you can take it and then you will be multiplying with w of i. And then this is your error function uh, which is uh, given by uh, that is uh, desired signal big of n minus y you will be knowing even you may name it in a different way. Okay. And then update of w is going to happen. So, that is mu error is calculated as mu into e n error and you will be updating the w i. Uh, you may be wondering why this has been done earlier why not uh, in the other student what he had done was it is inside this loop. I will be updating my uh, error and then I will be using it. So, can you guess what is the thing is going to happen because I am putting in the loop every time this constant has to be multiplied. Otherwise, I can there are going to be how many multiplications along with it two more multiplications I have to provide here I have reduced it by 1. So, that which is pre computed this is not going to change according in the loop and then you can multiply and get the result. So, you will be uh, getting your uh, error uh, basically shown this way. So, let, let me run the thing and then Okay. So, one of the thing is uh, what is it? This has not been calculated. So, what we will do is I have to hopefully I will be able to uncomment it and then we will save it and then try to run the thing. Uh, st still uh, it is giving an uh, uh, error in the uh, can you guess what is the thing uh, it is unable to get voice and then tone dot wave file actually sorry I have missed to put the thing what we will do is I can uh, bring the thing from the other one and then put it here. Here both have been I will put the copy it here and then uh, we will see and then change the name with this name. Let me 
it is nice C, oh, sorry, I should use capital save it and then I can run. Okay. Uh, there is uh, this thing because uh, it is uh, you will be seeing that index in position 2 exceeds array bonds this should not exceed what it says. So, the problem with this is uh, because it is a different signal what I have taken because they would have set it to uh, their requirement as you will be seeing it. I had to get this file here and then run the code. Okay. So, that uh, we can see it in the uh, hopefully I have the okay, that uh, thing uh, it has not been uh, copied for the thing. Okay, I will get the uh, that signal. So, that otherwise we have to uh, whatever error is coming what it shows is it is a two, uh, two channel what it has to take it. So, here it is having only one channel. So, unable to read this uh, file. So, when they have combined the two thing together we have to read them. So, what I will do is either we have to correct this or because it may give some more error in the thing the way they have uh, implemented it because uh, it is uh, two channel what it has taken the thing this is they are putting it as a first channel and this is going to take from the second channel. As you know it is a stereo input. So, stereo input in the first channel uh, what you can input is your desired signal in the second uh, this thing that is left channel will be desired signal right channel you can put the noise basically. So, that you are depicting whatever we discussed uh, uh, in the class that is the signals are coming from two sources one is the desired signal the other one is your uh, uh, what is it uh, noise separately captured from two um, places which has been combined and then put it as a audio basically in. So, this has to be uh, merged using the MATLAB code and then you mu we must be taking it in. Here it is only one channel what it present that is why it is giving me error. So, thank you for listening in the next class we will take up the uh, scrambling and then uh, uh, what I will put it as echo generation, reverberation and then scrambler together. Thank you.